Hi everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we'll continue our discussion of cluster maps. In the previous lecture we looked at cluster maps and we saw that by calling the cluster map function that Seaborn has we are able to draw a cluster map. So SNS that cluster map and we used our flights data set and let's pass the color map attribute and set it to cool warm. We also saw that we can pass the line width attribute to separate each of the cluster from another cluster. Let's set it to 1.2 and let's run this. So here we have a cluster map clustered by year and months and we have our key here another thing we can do is we can adjust the size of our cluster by passing the figure size attribute let's see an example so if i paste this here run it so this is the default size and let's pass the fig size attribute and let's try six by four we can adjust it by passing different values it's much smaller let's try eight by six that looks like like a nice figure size so we don't have to scroll up and down to see the entire cluster map i think we can go a bit larger let's try 9 by 7 so that's nice so you can adjust this to a size that fits your notebook very well great another thing we can do with cluster maps is standardize our flights data frame or data set either by columns or rows so to standardize our flights data set across the columns or rows, we'll be using an attribute known as the standard scale. Okay. So let's see how we can do that. Standardize across columns or rows. Let's see how we can do that. So as usual, we call the cluster map method or function and then we'll pass our flights data set and we'll pass another attribute known as standard scale standard underscore scale and this standard scale attribute takes the value of either zero or one so a value of zero means it will standardize the flights data set across rows whereas a value of one will standardize our data across columns. Let's first see a standard scale of one. This means it will standardize our it will standardize our flights data set across columns. Let's run it. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And if we want to standardize our flights data set across rows, we'll pass a value of zero for our standard scale attribute. Let me paste it here and pass a standard scale value of zero. Run it. And now we have our cluster map standardized by row versus columns in the above cluster map here. We can also normalize our flights data set by passing another attribute known as the z-score. So this time we'll see normalizing our data set. For that we'll pass an attribute known as z-score. So you can check out what z-score is on Google. I'll show you how we can normalize our flights data set by passing this z-score. Similar to the standard scale attribute, the z-score 
attribute takes the value of either 0 or 1. So 0 is to normalize our data across rows, whereas 1 is to normalize across columns. So this is for rows, whereas 1 is to normalize our data across columns. So we start by calling the cluster map function, and then we'll pass our flights data set, and the attribute is called z underscore score, z score, let's pass a value of zero. So this will standardize, this will normalize our data across the rows. Okay, we have that. And to normalize our data, across the columns, we'll have to pass a z-score value of one. So SNS that cluster map, and we'll pass our flight data set. And for the z-score attribute, we'll pass a value of one. Now our data set is normalized across the columns, right? So this is what I have for the lecture on cluster maps. Just to summarize, we saw that we can call Seaborn's cluster map method or function to cluster our data across the rows and columns. And we can call, we can pass the column cluster or the low cluster attributes if we want to cluster our data set either by columns or rows only. We also saw that we could change the color of our cluster map by passing the color map attribute. And we can pass the line width attribute to separate each cluster from the other. And we also looked at how we can change the size of our cluster map by passing the fixed size attribute. And finally, we looked at how we can standardize and normalize our cluster map across columns and rows by passing values of zero or one. Great. Thank you everyone. And see you at the next lecture.